We've just experienced the biggest exploit in the history of open source software. I've never seen something that touches on everything from the social engineering side to really well obfuscated hacks and just taking advantage of the entire open source ecosystem in order to build a very well hidden exploit. So well hidden that it only got found by some random Microsoft engineer because he was benchmarking his SSH connections. Previous similar security issues honestly weren't that similar. If we look at things like Log4j or even stuff like Heartbleed in the OpenSSL world, those mistakes were honest mistakes made by maintainers who were just trying to write good code and things slipped through code review that weren't built in exploits. They were just honest mistakes those people made. What happened here wasn't that. A good faith maintainer was exploited. He was harassed, he was manipulated, and he was tricked into building trust with an individual who then built a very well obfuscated hack and then distributed this across the world. If you're running Linux or Mac OS, there's a decent chance that you have the things that are exploited here in your systems. And if you're running a new enough version of Debian, you might even have the exploit too. This is absolute chaos and I wanna do my best to cover this responsibly. So rather than just being a soy JS dev, pretending I know what security is, I'm gonna call somebody who's a lot smarter than me, talk about the security side. Now, you're probably wondering, how did an open source project, a project where everyone can go and read the source code, get compromised by a malicious backdoor? That's a really good question. The way that it was done was actually pretty ingenious, and it was done via these two binary object files, files that were committed to the repo, not as source code, but as just blobs of data. These two binary files are injected into the build process, and when they're deobfuscated, turn into bash scripts. Now, what this bash script actually ends up doing is taking these layers that hide the obfuscated data inside of good large compressed.lzma and extracting the inner evil object file and then making that a part of the build process so that the evil object file is now depended on by the linker at compile time. Now, as far as affected systems, this only matters if a couple cases are true. One, the repo that you have is not from Git's source control, it's not from Git's version control, it's a release tarball that was from GitHub. They did not include this code in version control to keep it, to keep it hidden. Also, you have to be using x86-64 and a Linux GNU variant for this to get compiled into libLZMA as a backdoor. Also important to know that the backdoor only triggers if the following if the following things are true, if term is not set as an environment variable, and if the binary that is running is the user SBIN SSHD. Very important. Even though there is a backdoor in a widely used compression library, it only matters for SSHD. Now, what does this backdoor actually do? So here I have the object file put into Ghidra, the disassembler by the NSA, and there is a function here called getCPUID. GetCPUID is a function that is normally just an inline. It's a one-liner that it's inlined by the compiler. Inside getCPUID, which gets invoked by the linker, it runs all of the malicious backdoor functionality. Now, the details of this backdoor are still getting worked on by the reverse engineering community, trying to figure out what all of these named functions that normally would do compression things, but actually do backdoor things, what they do, and how they function. But if you want to follow along with me, I'm working on a video right now for this topic. Uh, it should come out as soon as we find out more about the backdoor. But that's it for now. Thanks for hanging out. If you couldn't have guessed from that little piece, Full Level knows a lot more about the security side than I do. And as interesting as that stuff is, you might notice there's a lot left to this video. And I don't actually plan on talking about the security side like at all anymore. This awesome diagram was put out by Frogger. And I highly recommend this if you're interested in the security side. But the thing I want to emphasize here is that in this diagram, we have this huge chunk at the beginning that goes from 2021 to where the exploit was introduced in 2024. That is a very small portion of this diagram. Most of this is focused on how the exploit works, how it was introduced, how the backdoor and the bash file for and all that goes together. There are much better people to cover that than me. What I want to cover is the part that I don't think is getting enough attention, which is the craziest hack I've ever seen, the social engineering part here. This individual didn't just sneak evil commits into a project that somebody else was running. They exploited the existing maintainer in order to take over a project with a lot of users in order to do horrifying stuff. So how did they do that? I read this phenomenal article by Rob Mensching that goes deep on the manipulative side of here and the experience of open source maintainers. And this, this is genuinely horrifying. Let's talk all about how open source's nature is able to be exploited in this way. 
Rob Menching posted a pretty cool article that was originally like a Twitter thread talking all about how this is a failure of open source itself to some extent. And I think this is a really interesting take that really shows the risk here. Originally a thread on Twitter about the XC LibLCMA vulnerability. When I finished typing it, I realized I had a real world slice of open source interaction that deserved more attention. There will be lots of analysis of the XC LibLCMA vulnerability. However, I found most skip over the first step of the attack. I get, this is why I'm making this video. This is a really important piece. The original maintainer burned out and only the attacker offers to help. This is the key. There was one maintainer, and then there was two maintainers, one of which was exploiting and was waiting for the opportunity to take over. And eventually, the first one burnt out, and now only the bad actor is left. This is unprecedented planning and execution like we've never seen before in open source. Amazingly, someone found an archive with an email thread that captured the state of the world just as the step zero was taking place. Let's read their words. First, we start with a reasonable request asked reasonably. The question forces the maintainer to address his failings. I use failings in quote here because A, the maintainer doesn't actually owe anything here, so he hasn't actually failed, and B, I know exactly how this feels. It feels terrible to let down your community. This is straight from that email. Is XC for Java still maintained? I asked the question here a week ago and have not heard back. Oh, I hate these messages so much. I hate these messages so much. I, I The number of times I've gotten things like this about random shit I built or work on, it, ugh, this is the worst feeling, to be like too busy for like a week to respond to things. And the response isn't, oh, I hope you're doing okay. Maybe we can chat soon. It's, oh, are you not working on this anymore? It's the most passive aggressive bullshit and it's the worst feeling to get messages like this. This is absolutely a, a key point of the start of the burnout of this maintainer. The maintainer acknowledges that he's behind and is struggling to keep up. This is a cry in pain. This is a cry for help. Help will not be coming in this thread. Again, very, very real and painfully common. Yes, by some definition at least, like if someone reports a bug, it will get fixed. Development of new features definitely isn't very active, frowny face. Again, very understandable. Oh, here we're introduced to our XC LibLZMA attacker in the very same message. It's not the help you were hoping for. Certainly not. Jiatan has helped me and he might have a bigger role in the future. It's clear that my resources are too limited, so something has to change in the long term. This is when the attacker offered to help. Instead, an unhelpful consumer says unhelpful things. This is exactly where these types of email threads go. Progress will not happen until there is a new maintainer. The current maintainer lost interest or doesn't care to maintain anymore. It's sad to see for a repo like this. Aside, given that this exploit appears to be a purposeful attack by Jiatan, should Jigar Kumar be considered an accomplice by actively encouraging the original maintainer to give it up? Not sure. We'll see this unhelpful customer again soon. Interesting, I, I like the implication here. Is it possible Jigar Kumar isn't a real person and was doing some nuts social engineering to try and burn this maintainer out faster to make it more likely he was willing to give up the project in the first place? There is some 200 IQ shit going on here, not just on the exploit side, but on the social management side. This is a people exploit first and foremost, as cool as the security shit is. Inevitably, the maintainer tries to defend himself. Maintainers handle the stress of burnout differently. I tend to get angry, which ends up coming across snarky. However, this reaction is heartbreaking. Yep. I feel this. I definitely am the snarky type, but I've seen other really good maintainers just straight up burn out, and it's the worst, most painful shit. I haven't lost interest, but my ability to care has been fairly limited, mostly due to long-term mental health issues, but also due to some other things. This seems like this particular poor fucking dev was targeted because the package was simple and should have been easy to maintain, and he probably assumed such when he built it, but because of struggles that existed well outside of the work he was doing, he didn't feel like he could maintain it, and some other party poked and prodded until he gave up. And the maintainer also reminds everybody how the world software is built now. It's also good to keep in mind this is an unpaid hobby project. And as always, the XKCD dependency comic is more relevant than ever. All modern digital infrastructure, all the crazy that we're building, is half being held up by some random project by some dude in Nebraska maintaining it thanklessly since 2003. Yeah. This is the first time we've seen at this level somebody look at this chart, look at this comic, and say, you know what? I bet I can get that person to give it up and let me hold this up instead. And that's exactly what this attacker did. And again, this is all within two weeks. Somebody filed an issue, got no response for a week, made a really rude comment. A week later, they come back and make another rude comment. Sadly, there are definitely real people who do this. On one hand, I think this is the attacker doing it. But on the other hand, I've seen people be this rude in open source before that I wouldn't be surprised if it was a real person. You ignore the many patches bit rotting away on the mailing list. Right now, you choke your repo. Why wait until 540 to change maintainers? Why delay what your repo needs? Okay, now I'm convinced it's the attacker. Just the tone of this one. The attacker is this other person. What purpose does this serve? I can't tell you how angry this makes me feel for the maintainer. Yeah, I... Ugh. Honestly, part of why I'm pretending this is the attacker is probably because I can't imagine a human doing this and I don't want to believe they would. 
I'm probably in some amount of denial right now where like obviously a, a real person that isn't an attacker could do this. But in order for me to, to be okay with humanity, I have to pretend this person is intentionally acting maliciously to make this all happen. Whew. Another really good point just made from Nick, from a moderation and security perspective, it's now dangerous to not ban rude people like this. Shout it from the mountaintops. Absolutely. In the future, cite this example as the reason you're banning people, because now you don't have to just say, I don't want to deal with you. Now you can say, dealing with you might cost the security of our package. Goodbye. Be kind if you want to be talked to. And I hope we can get that one little positive piece out of all this. So back to this uh, reasonable requester. <laughs> He decides to come back in and make demands. I'm sorry about your mental health issues, but it's important to be aware of your own limits. I get that this is a hobby project for all contributors, but the community desires more. But the community... Then fucking fork it. Then fork it. If you're not happy with the speed it's moving at, move it yourself. It's open source. You can fork it at any point. Ugh. He's freaking over the same thing. The, 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 Rob killed it with this article. Definitely give him a follow if you haven't. This is even better than I had hoped. Read the last sentence again. The community desires more. Consumers must be fed. The needs of the maintainer, of which there are clearly a few important ones, are ignored. Yeah. Our no longer reasonable requester also offers a suggestion. Notice that there is no offer to actually help. There never is. They're always bitching because they want you to do the work for them. Why not pass on maintainership for XC for C so you can give XC for Java more attention? Or pass on XC for Java to someone else to focus on that for C instead? Try to maintain both, or trying to maintain both means neither are maintained well. I don't love the suggestion here. I think there's a way to say this that is kind and thoughtful, but is not in a mailing list. It's in private conversations after you've built some trust with the person. But I, this one is so far the one that, that feels the most well-intended, but it's still a really dumb thing to say in a chain mail list that everyone can see like this. Then the maintainer explained the reality. Finding a co-maintainer or passing the projects completely to someone else has been in my mind a long time, but it's not a trivial thing to do. For example, someone need to have the skills, time, and enough long-term interest specifically for this. Also a great point. Everybody seems to think, at least people who aren't real open source contributors, seem to believe that you can just grab some random person and help them maintain your project. One of the things open source maintainers ask me about the most is how the hell did I find so many great people to build things like Create T3 app with me? I shouldn't even say with, I should say for. They're doing all of the work. The reason I am able to do that is I have an incredible community of awesome people like you, who hopefully has already subscribed to this channel, by the way, hit that button below. Subscriptions are free. You should consider it. But I have this awesome community of people who do dope shit. This community doesn't have a lot of noobs because being a noob kind of makes my videos hard to watch because I'm not going to teach you the basics of stuff. I'm not even going to tell you what the definition of a word is. I'm just going to talk about the shit I'm interested in. Because of that, I have a community of people who are on average much more technical than the typical community member might be. And on top of that, I keep a close eye on who's doing the most interesting stuff and pull them in in order to build a tighter little knit community inside of the chaos that we're doing. That's only possible because I have this massive platform with hundreds of thousands of subscribers and millions of views a month. And even then, I can only find find like five to 10 of these people. If you're this random block, you don't have that platform. You don't have those people to rely on for those types of things, which is why the people who are in this position surprisingly often come to someone like me to ask, hey, Theo, I need help maintaining this project. Can you help me find people to do it? It's really, really hard to do. If you're a random dev just using the package, it might seem like, oh, just grab someone else. It is not that fucking easy. Yeah, so uh, if you pressure somebody into just finding someone, their bar is not gonna be as good. It takes skill and knowledge to write software. And while many skills and some knowledge will transfer, working on a new software project inevitably requires developing new skills and more knowledge. Some devs are not fungible cogs that you can swap in and out all the time. Yep, like you can't just swap most devs in and out of things, especially if they're not being paid. They have to care, they have to understand, they have to be productive, and they have to know how to manage a community to do open source maintenance. Most devs aren't one of those things, much less all four. So it makes sense that even like the 1% of devs probably aren't cut out for open source maintenance. The email thread ends with the complaining consumers offering no help while continuing continuing to make demands. Only the attacker is left. Jia Tan may have a bigger role in the project in the future. He has been helping a lot off list and is practically a co-maintainer already. Smiley face. Yep. And I want to be very, very clear. Not only do I not blame the maintainer here, like the original maintainer, whatever the opposite of blame is here is how I feel. I feel genuinely so sorry and horrified that their mental health was exploited to do something as terrible as what happened here. And if anyone ever talks any shit on this maintainer for what happened here, fuck you.
I need you to hear how bad of a person you are if you blame them for this. Because they were taken advantage of for doing free, hard work for everyone to use. They did everything they could and more, and they were just trying their best to make sure this thing that people depended on was maintained well. They did nothing wrong here. They did absolutely nothing wrong here. I love the summary here. This is really good. I totally agree. This is a microcosm of things that if you're a maintainer, you've experienced and you know how bad it is. That's why I'm getting so heated because I've been a maintainer in the past and I still help maintain a bunch of stuff. Some of the most thankless work I've ever experienced. People just don't get it. It's actually funny going from open source to YouTube because I'll do a small thing and get a ton of praise on YouTube. I'll do a big thing and get nothing in open source. And I want to really shout out the original maintainer here. I know I was just cursing about anybody talking shit, but he did everything he could and more. And as a result, his GitHub account got suspended. Gia's the attacker, but he was following Lasse. So I could see from his following that Lasse was suspended. And I go to the opposite. So is Gia. So the attacker was suspended. That makes sense. Lasse getting suspended. No. GitHub, if anybody there is watching and listening, if you have no really good reason for this account to be suspended, free him now. This is horrifying that somebody who got their mental health exploited and did nothing wrong and has no harmful commits on their account ever is getting any shit for this at all. Free Lasse, this is nuts. He actually updated his blog and wrote some details here. And it's mostly just a fact list, but I, at the very least, I want to cite this because he deserves to be shown here because he's doing everything he can and more. Huge credit to him. OG Prodigy just found a message from the maintainer that I think is really valuable to read here. Hello, I have read the open wall post. I've been on holiday and happened to check email. I spent time with friends and they're at my place at the moment too, but I thought I have to spend some time on this since I happened to check the emails. I'm really tired, but I suppose I should do something right now. Longer investigation by me likely can only start on Monday or Tuesday. This sounded too serious to ignore. I I feel so bad for this maintainer. Holy shit. He was literally on vacation, hanging with his friends, saw this, and is doing his best to jump on it. He's still being super honest about it the whole time. I, uh, this is breaking my heart, like straight up. This sucks. God, that's so sad. I, again, if anyone gives this individual any shit, you're on my shit list forever. This is his brief overview because he just wanted as an official source to give some info here. And I have massive respect for him for doing this and finding the time, even when he's doing a bunch of other stuff and trying to enjoy his Easter with his friends. Yet he's still out here talking about it. Huge credit to him for that. Also, the Git repo for the actual project has been removed from GitHub, which again, if the repo was removed, his account should be reinstated. The fact that his account isn't reinstated is terrifying to me. I, I really hope GitHub makes the right decision and brings him back soon. This page is short for now, but it will get updated as I learn more about the incident. Most likely it will be during the first week of April. Again, it's not just getting more info it's he's trying to take a fucking vacation but seems to be focused on this as someone who's been in the middle of some crazy drama in the past it's hard to, to even just like sit with your friends and eat food without it being on your mind constantly it's the worst feeling in the world to have something so much bigger than you that everyone wants your input on that you know is like some amount about you but you can't really do anything it's the worst feeling in the world and i have so much sympathy for lasse for what he's gone through here the Git repos are on this URL here because again, they've been taken down other places. So he's making sure they're accessible. XC, the Takani.org, the DNS name has been removed. The XC projects currently don't have a homepage. This will be fixed in a few days. Facts. This is a CVE for it. XC utils 560561 released tarballs containing a backdoor. These tarballs were created and signed by Giotan. Tarballs created by Giotan were signed by him. Any tarballs signed by me were created by me. Good to call this out that his signing credentials weren't exploited because there are, there's been some skepticism on things like Twitter that an account was exploited and people were doing fake commits. And someone even said, this is a reason to sign your commits. You should sign your commits, but this is entirely separate from that. GitHub accounts of both me, Larzu, as well as Giotan have been suspended. This sucks. This sucks so hard. XC2Kani.org, the DNSC name, was hosted on GitHub pages and thus is down too. That's why it's down. Ugh. Well, if you're watching this, I am more than happy to help in any and all ways with the hosting of this. If GitHub's not going to reinstate you, I'll personally make sure this can be hosted. It'll do it out of pocket if I have to. You you deserve all of the community support you can get and more, and I'm happy to put my own money and time on the line for that because I'm I'm genuinely mortified as I keep reading this. Only I have had access to the main Tukani.org's website. Get the Tukani.org repositories as well as related files. Giotan only had access to things hosted on GitHub, which included this site, because this was like a subdomain that was going through GitHub. And this is the only thing he ever had access to on the domain. This is a really good call out to make too, so that we know what we can and can't trust. I'm amazed at how useful this tiny little post is. And I'm really thankful that he made this, even if he's not taking the break that I wish he would take. So again, Lassie, you're a fucking legend. You're doing this better than anyone would be expected to, much less somebody who was like bullied off of the project. Good shit. This, in my opinion, is textbook how to handle when something like this happens. He, he has now written the book of how to do this right. And I hope other maintainers that are seeing this and are mortified at the very, very least can learn lessons from how well he has handled this and how to keep this from happening in the future as a result. 
This is another IRC message that came from the original maintainer. And there was a really good quote in here I wanted to highlight. The crazy thing is how much Gia helped. I still need to get more facts to exclude that it wasn't his account being compromised, etc. Although the evidence I've read is heavily tilted already. Gia actually helped. So he was playing all sides of this. This is one of the craziest 200 IQ manipulative warfare, social and software engineering hacks I've seen ever. I can't fathom anything else coming close to this. And I feel so bad for the poor maintainer who was exploited in this way. To Larzu, on behalf of the open source community and software as a whole, I hope you know how sorry we are. This sucks and you did nothing wrong here. And if anyone here or elsewhere talks any shit on you, do not let that be your problem. Let that be ours. The community needs to do better here and we as a group need to stand up for what happened and do our best to build a culture where this can't happen in the future. Because this was not an individual problem. This was not an engineering problem. And this certainly wasn't a code review problem. This was a community problem. And we failed this maintainer. And we need to do better. That's all I have to say about this one. I am horrified. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go send an email to the maintainer and let him know that we respect him a lot. And do not harass him. Do not spam him with stuff. But if you do see him around, let him know that he did good here. <sighs> and until next time, peace nerds.